All right, so the first thing to know is that uh, V-Ray is a pretty complex system. There's a lot we can do with it. There's a lot of presets that can be made. Um, you can tweak you know, camera settings and lighting levels, the number of times light bounces around. And to do that all, uh, it's done under the V-Ray options. So here, uh, we have kind of this panel with all these trays and go out. And this is uh, a lot of stuff that I personally don't even mess with. There's there's no reason for me to come in uh, and, and go over each and every one of these because I think it's a very, very small percentage of people who, who will actually utilize kind of the, the most efficient means of rendering this stuff out. That's global switches. Under system, uh, again, it's it's incredibly complex and it talks about you know how the the software is actually working on the computer things that I work with every day is the camera settings here uh, we're able to treat the 3d camera we have looking at the scene as a physical camera and and do things like uh, specifying you know the shutter speed or the f-stop if anyone's familiar with manual photography I'm sure you're familiar with these things this will change the way the, the image is rendered It'll, help be too bright or too dark all of that can be adjusted here additionally we do effects like a depth of field and have the thing close to us a little blurry the thing in the midground sharp and the thing far away blurry again um, I, I rarely use that it's something I can do in Photoshop and I think it's important to always keep that in mind exactly you know what do I need to render and what can I do in Photoshop and, and how much do I want my rendering to take care of and how much will I take care of in post-processing so that's the uh, the camera setting. Uh, the environment. Uh, right now, this is just showing that we have kind of a global illuminated skylight, which is a bluish color, and we have uh, reflection maps on. Later, we'll get into kind of these things here with re reflection and refraction mapping, and that's done here. Uh, this is, again, another setting I really don't mess with, anti-aliasing. Um, settings that are controlling noise level in the image. Color mapping again not needed sometimes I'll come in here and use the VFB channels this is a way to control specific instances of, of data uh, that will add layers so while we'll get like an image out of it we could also get additional layers and the z-depth is how far back in space the the material is rendered out so with something like that we can use uh, to help go into Photoshop and blur different aspects based on their depth but again we'll get to those a little later in the tutorial output this one's really important and very easy this is the size of the rendering you know right now if I did a rendering and I can do one um, it's incredibly bright and dark for the actual image uh, it's not you know doing that much for me um, but it's also very very small and so while this is great just to do a quick test it would never be what I want you know as I move into production another important thing that always trips people up and myself included is to make sure that I'm always rendering the same aspect ratio of what I see on my screen if I say get aspect ratio like right now we're looking at 1.33 if I get aspect ratio it's 1.94 now this is my screen's a widescreen display so this uh, resolution changes. I can lock that aspect ratio here and increase the size of the rendering. Coming down I can set up output files. Here we actually have the way the, the scene is illuminated so this is indirect illumination uh, and these are the types of illumination it's using to figure that out. Uh, we're using the irritance map and uh, brute force. We could change these. Um, I usually don't come in manually and, and make all these changes uh, and I'll show you in a second how you can load presets. Uh, once you set those up you can come in here and this is how many times the light bounces, what's the sample level, how many lights are they sending out, uh, so on and so forth. Really detailed stuff. Caustics, uh, this is something that I'll get into hopefully a little later. It's going to be the way glass and kind of reflective items uh, manipulate the scene and manipulate the light. Uh, if you can imagine having a, some, a glass of water held up to light, uh, the light would bend through it and, and respond in a different way. So this is a, one aspect that would help bring some realism to the scene. Uh, and then as we move down, we have some displacement and the real-time engine, which we're not going to get into. But one of the most simple basic things we can do is just click the open, uh, or go file open in Rhino 4, and we have a series of presets here. and. Uh, 
the ones I usually end up using is this GI IR map medium. Uh, so it's a global elimination and then irritants map. And it's just the medium setting. So if I open that, it sets up some presets for me. And the one thing I worry about is that uh, I want to override the viewport again because you can see it's not even to the aspect ratio I had set before. So I set that, lock it back. Uh, sorry, there we go, lock it, and then go to something that matches my screen size. And as we come down, uh, you can see that it's 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 already set up. Um, all these settings had changed once I told it I wanted a medium rendering. So if I come up and just say render, you can see it's a little bit larger. It's definitely a little more clear. It's got this beautiful white and black volumes where we have no materials in the scene. The water is a big white plane, and it's kind of washed out. Um, but it is a huge step in, of improvement from the last rendering. So what more can we do? Uh, well, one, it's a little too bright. So let's come back up and go to camera settings, turn on the physical camera. Right now it's a shutter speed of 30. I think that's pretty low, so I'm going to go to 60. With the shutter speed, it's, a, it's, a, it's important to remember that it's 1 divided by whatever you put. And that's the number of seconds the lens is open. So right now, if I have 1 divided by 60, it's a 60th of a second the lens is open and closed. So, you know, some light would get in. If I said 500, it's 1 over 500. So 1 500th of a second, less light would get in. The image would be darker. So let's try 60. I'm also going to come up, and here I'm going to add a V-ray infinite plane. And by doing that now, my model is sitting on a base, and I'll be able to get shadows off of it. So let's set up another view, render again. Here you can see the image is obviously darker. Uh, we have what's called vignetting around the edges here. You can see it's darker and then lighter in the middle. And I'm not, not a huge fan of that. If that's something I wanted, I'd, I'd do it in Photoshop. So it's just a little too dark, so we'll close this. We're going to turn off vignetting. We're going to drop this stack down to what it preset was. It's 30. We'll render again. And we're starting to get there. The, the actual quality of the image is starting to come along, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with kind of the contrast and shadow. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at adding a sunlight system, which will help bring some realism to the scene.